my brothers and sisters, the opening of today's Mass will be a little bit different than what we normally do. Since this coming week, we are going to be celebrating our independence. I ask at this time that you please rise and we will begin with pledging our allegiance to the flag and the opening hymn for today will be the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. So please join with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and through the authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. 
for God or man to be imperishable. The images of his own nature he made him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the consolation and salvation of those who trust in you. In our deepest sorrow and despair, our help is assured because of your love and compassion, so that we may always call upon you and seek your aid. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we firmly believe that your Son, Jesus Christ, died for us and rose to life. We pray for our brother in blessed memory, Thomas Corver, who lived and died in this faith. Raise him at the last day to share in the glory of the risen Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the 13th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being. And the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God, for man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. The response for today is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I have praised you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me, O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. The second reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you. May you excel, excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. This is the word of the Lord. I know my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld, from among those going down into the pit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Cleanse my heart and lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel. According to Saint Mark, when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue, officials' house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of the synagogue official. He caught sight of the commotion and people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, kong, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. After that, they were utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Don't get old because as you get older, believe it or not, you get shorter. And the gowns don't fit as well. And hopefully I will be able to remain over five foot. And he, Jesus, took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, Kom, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. After that, they were utterly astonished. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters, on this warm and humid summer day. The story of the raising of Jairus' daughter was so important that it is found not only in the Gospel of Mark, but is also recorded in the Gospel accounts of Matthew and Luke. Today's story is different from most of the miracles of Jesus, for it is the first time that our Lord raised someone from the dead. One of my favorite scripture passages is found in Luke chapter 7, where John the Baptist, being incarcerated in prison, sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus, Are you the one to come, or do, or should we wait for another? To this Jesus replied, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The poor have the good news proclaimed to them. The dead being raised. In today's gospel, the daughter of Jairus' of Jairus was dead. The son of the widow Nain was dead. Even Lazarus, for whom Jesus wept over, was dead for three days. But the power of the Holy Spirit, which descended upon Jesus at his baptism, was a power that could even raise the dead back to life. Do you know that in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, that the same dynamic power of God was present when Peter raised Doris from the dead? In Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, we read, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. Throughout the short ministry of Jesus, which lasted for only three years, that there were many miracles that were based in faith and belief. Your faith has made you whole. As you believe, so shall it be done. Jesus tells us, that if we have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, all things are possible. But true faith must be genuine for miracles to take place. The voice of the Lord calls out to each of us as he said to Jairus, Be not afraid, only believe. Jesus was telling Jairus and each of us to have confidence in him, to be dependent upon him, to have hope in him, to have faith in the resurrecting power of Christ, and all things are possible. You know, our minds tell us one thing, but if the Lord has touched you in your life, or in the life of someone you know and love, your hearts give you the assurance to be not afraid <laughs> and to trust in him. The Gospel of Count, as found in Mark, does not tell us the name of the little girl. All we know is that she was well loved. For there was a large group of people who had gathered crying and wailing over the little girl who had died. She is not dead. She is only sleeping. The gospel tells us that the crowd laughed and ridiculed Jesus. 
This is how many in our society view Jesus. This is how society views those who believe in the Lord. There are so many who are shallow and lack faith and see others who are true believers in the Lord as a joke. Did not Jesus state that the world will hate and persecute the believers? For they first hated and persecuted him. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the blessed Lord takes each of us by our hand and says to us, I say to you, arise. Arise, my brothers and sisters, from your doubts. Arise from your fears. Arise from all that you will face in your life. For the one who quiets the storms of life and brings us to a clearer understanding of the love that God has for each of us can resurrect and transform one's life if only one believes. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we who offer these gifts look forward to our own resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, accept the sacrifice we offer to you for the repose of the soul of our brother Thomas. May your love cleanse him from the effects of his human weakness and forgive any sins that he may have committed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, oh, forever and ever. for us the body and the blood 
of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you his almighty father giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you in like manner after supper taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands again he gave thanks to you blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins as often as you do this do it in remembrance of me Therefore, in the remembrance of this Christ, your Son, the Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and an accurate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our nature, our gave and have that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in the Magnet Post. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Lord, remember your servant Thomas, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To his soul, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy so part in fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching. And then following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day. 
Lord from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supporting by the help of your mercy, may we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. Receive the body. 
shower.
come to the banquet of life which Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lo, the sacrifices are offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the light, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.